Hello, good morning, good afternoon. This is Janice Punia Bruin, and we're on the uh, HFBN, the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network. My program today is from Petition to Praise. And once again, I'm just going to read real quick the scripture in which the Lord had given me. It's Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I just want to let you know today that we are... Super excited about everything that's going on here at HSBN. And I want to just invite you to drop us a line um, on the bottom of our screen. We have our PO box, or you can email me. My, my Gmail account is there on to praise at gmail.com. If you need prayer, just to say hello, just to let me know that you're listening, whether you enjoy the show or not, or you know, if the Lord leads you to, to give an offering, please by all means. You know, know that everyone here that that is on this network does everything for the Lord. It, it's nothing is for any jingle in our own pockets. Everything is sown into the kingdom. And that's what makes being part of this HSBN family so beautiful. And I that's why we love each other so much. Nobody's uh, that that fear isn't there. You know, we know that the love of the Lord is there and that everybody here on this station is dedicated to one thing, either praising God, worshiping God, teaching the word of God, ministering to others, encouraging someone, but everything goes back into seeding something towards the kingdom of the most high, everything, everything, everything. And it makes it truly a beautiful place. Again, our email, our HSBN uh, you can go on the website. You can see us on Roku, Apple TV. There's, I think, 22 different uh, uh, channels and ways to get a hold of us on Facebook, Facebook Live. Please just drop us a line. Let us know how we're doing and uh, know that we love you and that we're all working together to bring the gospel of the Most High God to all of you. Amen. Well, today our show, our this uh, time together is called, it's part two of the trophy is for the victor. Excuse me, a hair here. Okay. And we have to know that as children of God, that we don't just get a trophy for participating. We talked about this back in, in the um, part one. And the Lord had been showing me, you know, in this day and age, like I said, when my, my older son, who's 12 years older than my youngest daughter, when he played in sports, he would get a badge or a medal. And it was first place, second place, third place, championship you know, best jumper, best. There was always these specialty awards and everybody wanted to get these awards. I was first place, mom, I was second place. Our team was championship. There was all this gusto for getting these medals and these achievements and everybody wanted to win the first place or the championship medal. Well, now we go down 12 years. Now my daughter, who is also starts playing soccer and these other sports, I started noticing that everybody got a trophy. Participation. You know, now when it came to soccer, my daughter did not, ex you know, she played a softball, but soccer wasn't really her sport and she didn't really enjoy it that much, but because she had made a commitment, she had to play soccer and she didn't really enjoy it. But at the end of the season, my daughter got a trophy participation. Everybody got a trophy. Those that played, those that played hard, those that didn't play at all, those that cried, those that sat in the grass and did nothing. Everybody got a participation trophy. And that's how the world has us believing that we can just go through life, whether we want to give effort or not. And we get to get something just for showing up. We have that something for nothing because, you know, we're going to be fair to everyone. Well, in the kingdom of God, it doesn't work that way. And we're going to go and we're going to look at something. But first, I want to read you a scripture. I want to read that scripture. You know, before we start, let's go ahead and pray real quick. I'm sorry. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come before you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord. 
I thank you for this day. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ that are listening today, Father. And I pray, Father, that you would just empty me out, Father. Empty this vessel out, Lord. Let there be nothing but you and me, Father. Let that you and me having a communication and that I would speak your words and not mine, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray that you would be with my brothers and sisters. Give us an ear to hear, Father. In Jesus' holy name, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God and the full fire of heaven would go before us, Father, and minister life to us, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Have to give the Lord all his honor and his glory. But let's go ahead. We're going to read. This is, this is the King James Version of 2 Timothy 4, 7. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. I want to read it again, but I'm going to read it in the Amplified. And it says, 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good and worthy and noble fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith, firmly guarding the gospel against error. And sometimes I know it says that we finish. It means that we're continually moving forward. A part, we don't get a participation. Of, we don't get to get the gift of salvation and all that he puts in us and just sit there with it. We don't get to do that. We have to get up and we have to hear what God wants us to do. And it doesn't mean that everybody's an evangelist and everybody's a prophet and everybody's a pastor and everybody. No, it means every one of us are ministers of the gospel. Every single one of us are called to be ministers of the gospel. It doesn't mean that you have to be on Facebook or you have to be on TV or Roku or you'd have your own channel. It just means even in your own home, even if it's just your neighbor, the people at the market, you can minister the gospel. We're all called to be ministers of the gospel. And we don't do it on our own because God gives us, when we do it through Christ Jesus, we can do it. We can, we can run the race. We can do what he's called us to do because he's the one that calls us and he's the one that equips us. Psalms 1835 says, you have also given me the shield of your salvation and your right hand upholds me and your gentleness makes me great. He's the one. He's the one that goes ahead and he's the one that fortifies us. He's the one that comes and he brings us um, victories. He's the one that gets us to keep on going through the race. He's the one that supercharges when we get weary. He's the one that says, here's my shield. Take it, daughter. Run. Keep on running. Here's my sword, daughter. Keep on fighting. If we abide in him, he will abide in us. And he will give us what we need to run the race. In Psalm 60, 11 to 12, it says, oh, give us help. The, advers the adversary for deliverance by man is vain, though God we shall do valiantly and is. He will tread down our adversaries. Right there tells us that he's the one that will help us with the good race. When we say, oh, I'm running my race, but you don't know what's coming at me. All of us have things coming at us. If it's not today, it's going to be tomorrow. If it's not today, it was yesterday. All of us find ourselves in hurdles, running our race, and things are coming. We're like the, have you ever seen those um, games like Super Mario? And he's all happy and he's running and, boulders are coming at him and fires are plopping up and things and he's and he's trying to dodge and he's trying to jump and he's running and he goes up mountains and things popping at him that's us that's us we but we have to keep on running we have to keep on running yes the fiery darts are going to come the flames are going to pop up from nowhere boulders come rolling at us but we got to keep on running in the race what happens the only way that we become the victor is if we keep on running that's the only way that we can we can be victorious is to keep on running. You see that little Super Mario guy? He's always running. The poor guy here, there, jumping fire, uh, volcanoes, but he keeps on running. That's us. We need to keep on running the race. We need to keep on moving forward. We have to be sidetracked. Yes, floods will come. Yes, but the Lord says that he will equip us. He said that he will equip us. If we run, let the Lord go before you. Say, Father, I'm going to run this race. And if you keep your eyes on the Lord, keep him the author and the finisher of our faith. If you keep your eyes on him, even though things will come at you, you know, you know that as long as you have your eyes on God, that he will be there to help you, to lift you up, to put out his shield. He will give you the battle axe. He'll give you the sword. He'll give you a way of escape. It says, um, Psalms 44, three to seven. It says, for by their own sword, 
they did not possess the land and their own arm did not save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your presence for you favor them. You are my king, O God. You are my king, O God. Hallelujah. Further down it says, but you saved us from our adversaries and you put to shame those who hate us. Let the Lord take care of the obstacles. You need to keep on running. You need to keep on running. Don't depend on man. Don't depend on on someone else to help you with this race. Depend on God. Yes, we have brothers and sisters in Christ who can encourage us. We have ministers that will minister life to us. We have um, prophets that sometimes the Lord gives them a word and they they um, give us a word that that becomes and it becomes amplified in our lives. And we know that the Lord has us by our hand or has a mandate for us. But you we have to depend on God because all of these functions all come from God. The fivefold ministry, it all comes from God. It's not the man, it's the creator. It's not the man, it's never gonna be the man. The man can't heal you. The man can't give you a prophetic word. And if he does, then guess what? You don't want that. The man can't heal you. He's not the one that saved you. He cannot be the one that in, is the one to enrich your life. He gives the words which God's given him to enrich your, enrich your life. I was watching the other day. There was a woman giving this beautiful testimony about a beautiful word and some things that the Lord had revealed to her through this particular prophet. It was very, very beautiful. It was very de detailed. And I started looking at all the comments and everybody on there was, what's her name? When is she coming? Oh, can I have her, her contact information? But, and it was all about this woman. And I said, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. It's not about the woman. If we're ever seeking to run after somebody, guess what? We've taken our eyes off of God. I was really heartbroken when I sent all of these Christians. Oh, I, you think, she, you know, she think, oh, I need her. How do we contact her? Do you have an email for her? Her, her, her. Guess what? I have an email for you. Get on your knees, you know, at Jesus, at the most high Dot com. That's where you're going to get your answer on your knees. If you, uh, I need to contact her. You need to get on your knees and contact the most high God. You don't need to be getting a hold of someone to get you. Yes. There are people that are called for deliverance and healing and restoration. Yes. But when you are so focused on getting a hold of this person, that's in deliverance, th these big names, when you're so, when you're so, um, in need of pulling down these big names, because you feel that they're, they're not the ones that deliver you. They are not the ones that heal you. Don't put your head, your eyes on man. The gifts come from God. The gifts come from God. Yes. And he uses mighty men and women. He uses them all the time for healing. He uses them for restoration. He uses them for deliverance. Yes, 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 he does. But we have to be very careful, brothers and sisters, that we do not put our eyes on that person. Because we get ourselves in a lot of trouble when we put our eyes on that person. Here at HSBN, there are numerous, numerous men and women that are supercharged on fire. I mean, these are fire eating, breathing men and women of God that can minister a word that speaks life. But each one of them, as they go forth, they go forth in the Holy Spirit. They know that it is God and not them. I have yet to meet one person that has been with me on this channel that it's about them. Now, maybe there are some, I don't know everybody's heart, but I'm telling you, everyone that I have met, I have seen, Go with a humble heart and preach the gospel. They have laid hands on the sick. They have prayed deliverance for restoration. And they have all done it in the name of the Lord. They go forth in the Lord. So be very, very careful. Very, very careful that we do not put our eyes on man. Amen. Anyway, sorry, side note. I didn't mean to get sidetracked there. I want to just go real quick and I'm going to tell you, we, we're talking about to run our race and we ask about the race. I just want to go really quick and I'm going to go to Matthew 25, 14. And I'm kind of going to jump around because the, the story of the peril goes from uh, 14 to 30, but it's Matthew 25, but I'm going to kind of jump around because I just want you to get the gist of what this is. I know many of you have heard it before, but uh, what I'm talking about is that 
when we're talking about running our race, see, God gives us something so that we can run our race. And I'm going to tell you about the, I, actually, I was the last person in this parable and the Lord had to revive me literally like paddles, wake me up. I was lukewarm. I was lukewarm and I was swimming around. I was just circling around and around and around and the graciousness of the Lord God and the obedience, the obedience of even our Papa Bills and the obedience of men and women of God came and they knocked on my heart and the Lord said, here I am here, there, go, go. I praise God because the Lord brings men and women into our lives to, to minister life to us. But again, they do it in the name of the Lord. They don't do it in their own name because we know that the only thing we can do anyways, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. He's the one that renews me. He's the one that delivers me and he's the one that restores me. So Matthew 25, 14, for it is just a man who is about to take a journey and he called his servants together and trusted them with his possessions. To one, he gave five talents to another two and to another one, one. each accord, each according to his own ability, and then he went on his journey. So as we go through the story, we see that the first one that received five, he traded and he received five more. The second one that had received uh, one who had, and the one who had two gained two more. So the one that had five, he got five more. The one that got two, he got two more. But the one with the least, let's put it this way, the least calling with the least talent, because it says here, according to his own ability, that he had the least because he was doing the least. He was the least, had least ability. But the one who received one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. He hid his master's money. Now, like I said, the first two, they went and they multiplied it. Now, after a long time, verse 19, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Pastor, you entrusted me with five. See, I have gained five more talents. And his master said, well done, good and faithful servant. So this is the five. So this is some of our, like I said, the men and women that, that I get the pleasure and the honor of. Uh, ministering with on HSBN. Um, I know a lot of them that have five talents and they've reaped five talents, 10 talents and 50 talents. They men and women that they're completely sold out for the Lord and all they do, they're humble, they're kind, and they just keep giving and giving and giving because they're running their race. They're running full speed and they're like super Mario. They're running, they're jumping, they're flames. Everything's coming at them, but they're running. And I look at them in awe and I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Father, give me that ability. Show me how to run my race that way, Father. I don't want to be them. I want to be like you, Lord. And they want to be like you. And I see you in them. And that's what I want somebody to say about me. I see Jesus in you, Janice. I see Jesus in you. That's what I want them to say when they see me. I see the Lord in you. Amen. Okay. So then he said, well done and good and faithful servant. So then also the one who had two talents came forward and said, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more talents. And his master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over little. I will put you in charge of many things. And the one who had then he called the person with one talent. The one who received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew that you would be harsh and demanding man reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering what you did not scatter. So I was afraid. I was afraid to lose what little I had, my one talent. And I went and hid your talent in the ground so that you have what is your own. But his master answered him saying, you wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I reaped the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money with the bankers and at my return, I would have at least read the money, the interest from the bank. So take, so, so take the talent away from him and give it to the one with 10 talents. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who does, 
but from the one who does not have because he has ignored or discarded his blessing and gifts from God, even what he does have will be taken from him. Throw out this worthless servant into the outer darkness in the place of grief and torment. There will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. I am here to tell you that I was that one talent person. And maybe you've been that one talent person. Because the Lord called me. And out of fear, out of fear, which thank the Lord, I've said it before that he delivered me. But out of fear, because see, when the Lord gives you, it's his talent. That's what I was telling you before. It's not, wasn't my talent. It's his talent, his gift, his anointing that he gives you. It's his, it's his, it belongs to the most high God. It's not yours. He allows you to have the gift so that you can go out and multiply it. He gives you the gift so that you can preach the word. He gives you the gift so you can go lay hands on the sick. He gives you the gift so you can go set the captives free in his name. He gives you those gifts. He gives you that talent so you can go out and do something with it. Not so that you can be the person that doesn't finish the race. We all get a talent. There was three different people. They all got a different degree of talent. Now, I didn't get a talent like Billy Graham. I didn't get that talent. I didn't get that talent, you know, like Spurgeon. I didn't get that talent like, like so many of the other great men and women. Got. I got the talent for Janice. I got Janice's talent. But for many years, I got Jan the talent that God gave me, and I stuck it, and I hid it because I was fearful. And I wasn't even fearful about using the gift. I was just fearful that I wouldn't be able to run the race that God had called me to run. I was fearful because I was looking over. I was wondering what other jumps were going to be. I was, I was like that little Super Mario. I was afraid of the flames and I was afraid of the boulders and I was afraid of the arrows and I was afraid of anything that might happen. And I stood in a place of fear. And so I was hiding my talent in the ground, but at least I had this little thing, but I was hiding it because I was so afraid of doing God's will. I was so afraid of failing that I was failing. I was so afraid. Let me repeat that. I was so afraid of failing that I was actually failing. I was so afraid of dying that I was dying. I was trapped. I was trapped in my own head and I wasn't running my race. I wasn't running the, the good race. I wasn't fighting the good fight. I was sitting there under was sitting on top of my talent, hoping that, that I somehow was going to get a participation trophy in life. That's what I was looking for. If I just hold on, just hold on to the end, I'll, I'll make it. You know, I don't want to now that when the Lord revealed to me what I was doing and he set me free and he put me on a new path, I don't want to just get to heaven and say, oh, I made it. I want to, my dad used to say, man, when I get to heaven, I want to get to heaven like on a lightning bolt. I mean, they did everything they could and I finally went on to heaven. And, you know, and, and, you know, he would say, I'll just like, skid into heaven and I'll be like, wow, I'm finished, you know, because he ran a race, you know, and he was all skinned up and, you know, uh, all kinds of grass in my hair and everything because I ran my race and, you know, whew, I made it through the finish line. I wasn't that way. I was holding on my little town and I was hoping to kind of skip in there and just somehow slide by, you know, that was a life in the pit of hell. I was living less than what God had called me to live. God wants us. He gives us the talent so that we can use them. He gives us the talent so we can bless others. And when we bless others, our soul gets blessed. Our soul gets blessed. You know, I, I, I didn't realize at that time. But I'm going to read it again on 29. For everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts from God and have used them wisely, more will be given. And thank God, because as I use the talents that God gives me, as I use them, he keeps bestowing more on me and more on me. And I'm like, wow, Lord, I mean, out of the blue, he's giving me these things. And I just like, Lord, where did this come from? And why the promotion that he gives me, it comes from our promotion comes from the Lord given me promotion. He's giving me gifts. He's giving me this love and compassion for the lost, you know, that I didn't have before. There's a difference between feeling sorry for them 
and then having a godly mandate in your heart to travail for them. See, I always felt sorry for them, but it wasn't until I got a hold of what God was trying to give me and I realized that the talent was in my hand and that I was that foolish and wicked servant. I was that person that had dropped out of the race. I was like the 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 person that gave up. I was living in defeat. And it wasn't until I said, wait, here's my talent until the Lord shined that talent. And that talent became so, it was like, it was burning in my hand and I had to do something with it. I'm here today from a burning talent. I'm talking to you today because the talent started to burn in my hand and the Lord said to use it so I can multiply it. There are many that need to hear the word of God. You need to get up. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, of a sound mind. Janice, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Janice, you can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens you. Janice, your name means God is gracious. Janice, get up, get up. I love you. I love you. Get up. And he, and I heard him in the small hours at that convention when he, they called me up there. I knew that it was the Lord. I could feel him all around me. And I said, thank you, Lord. You saw me withering and dying and you heard my prayers and you came and you rescued me. He'll do the same thing for you. I'm going to say a prayer real quick before we close today. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are watching today, Father. Lord, you know each and every one of them, Father, and you know if they're holding their talents in their hand, Father. If they're using them wisely, I pray that you would bless them abundantly, Father. But for those that are not, Father, for those that are not using their talent, for those that are sitting on it, for those that have had it hidden, Father, those that have been afraid, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would send your Holy Spirit to go get them wherever they are right now, Father, and remind them that you gave them that talent because they are of worth. There is not one worthless person in the kingdom of God. Don't ever feel that way. Pick up your talent. Lord, send the talent. Show them, Father. Show them by your Holy Spirit. Send ministering angels. Send brothers and sisters to encourage life to them, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, if they don't know you, Father, if they don't know you, Father, I pray, Father, that you would send laborers, Father, to go out and minister the gospel, that they would come to know you, Father, that they would understand what I'm talking about, these talents, that they would understand what it is to run this race, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Meet them wherever they are most high God I pray in Jesus holy name you are faithful God you are loving God you are the most high God you are the alpha and the omega father you're the author and the finisher of our faith father in Jesus holy name father until we are able to be together again father touch them where they are at father minister life to them father help them to dig up their talents and to finish their race father in Jesus holy name I pray thank you Lord Jesus because you are faithful in Jesus name Amen. God bless you. I love you. Again, email me or drop us a line. If you have a prayer request or you need prayer, just let us know. We're here for you. God bless you. Until next time.